So the talk is about 50 shades of web application firewall. I suppose everyone knows about firewall. Yeah. So, and but this is also what we already know about WAF. Picture has a worth of thousand words. I think no need to explain these pictures. So, and look at the expression. It's a million dollar expressions basically. So, this is what we already know about WAF. Barracuda. They have 150,000 customers around the world, including US Department of Justice, US Army, all automotive giants. So, they have uh, this $150,000 is uh, 50,000 organization. It's basically a link. You can go there and you can look at the list of their customers. So, all big names are there. According to Gartner Magic, uh, they place Barracuda here among the challenges category. The leader they consider it's an Imperva, and here we have a Barracuda that is continuously challenging Imperva. So, some facts about Barracuda, uh, about WAF, or in this particular case, Barracuda. So, from 13th of August to 24th of May, almost 10 months, they have uh, seven updates of their attack definitions, default attack definitions that are stopping the attacks, in particular cross-site scripting. And they have nothing related to cross-site scripting. So during these 10 months, they update, but have nothing. They were safe from that end. Meanwhile, I joined Hyundai Auto Ever company. It's, uh, I joined Auto Ever on 1st of March. It's an IT service company for Hyundai and Kia Motor. And uh, now, if you remember the dates, from 13th of August to 24th of May, 10 months, 7 updates, no information on cross-site scripting. I joined in March. It took two months to settle down at a new place. I am from academia. For me, industry is a new experience. So, from 25th May to to date, there are five updates of their attack definitions related to cross-site scripting. And there is a one firmware patch also has been announced just last week. So, in six months, five updates and one firmware patch. I know now I work for Hyundai and Kia. It's not easy to make an update. I am telling you, this is the secret. It's not easy to update something in a big organization. So how to identify Barracuda? For example, if you are testing some website and how you will s see that the site is using Barracuda, this message, the specified URL cannot be found. If you see this message, believe me, they are using Barracuda. The problem is that no one has the time to change this default message or default error page. Everyone is using it. The interesting thing is that Barracuda itself on their own website is using this message. So, and we are also using this message. So, Barracuda has 18 regular expressions. For me, it's a white box test. I have the regular expressions in front of me. So, they have 18 regular expressions and they are categorized into two. One call, they call it a cross-site scripting strict. Five regular expressions are there. And one, they call it cross-site scripting simple. And 13 were there now. Previous total was 11. Five months ago, the total was 11 in this category. But now 13, they have added two new regular expressions. I will not expose these internal regular expressions. Sorry, I know the regular expressions, but I promise them that I will not expose it. But no problem. I will terms in term, I will talk in terms of metadata. If you remember this NSA slide, it's an amazing slide. So just read any of the point. So they know you rang a phone sex service at 2:24 a.m. and spoke for 18 minutes, but they don't know what you talk about. It's it's implicit. So let the fun begin. Actually, I tested all these regular expressions one by one and found weaknesses. And this, is, this research last, uh, is, was running since last six months. I am working with them uh, so that at least we can raise the bar for the attacker. I call it bypasses. Barracuda calls it functional deficiencies. 
<laughs> you call it weaknesses, shortcomings, or shared choices, yours. So let's start with even handler based shades of Barracuda. So initially, when I started looking at Barracuda regular expressions, there were four regular expressions that were taking care of even handlers. If you want to execute cross site descripting, there is a great chance you are going to use an even handler. So they have four regular expressions. They call it a on event reference, on event reference miscellaneous two one. So, and six months ago, this sign was not there. Updated, updated, updated. All receive an update because of me. So, and uh, what's the current situation? So, this is how I start. If you look at the date on 19th April, I tweeted this vector. Details on toggle. This was the first bypass of Barracuda because this on toggle event handler was not part of their list. So it's HTML5 based event handler. The next bypass is basically I am using an event handler called on search. Again, on the same day, six months ago, I tweeted this about this vector. So these both bypasses Barracuda. And then I found a list of missing handlers. It's not easy to find this list of event handlers because what I can see, they have the most comprehensive list of event handlers. And in order to find what is missing, I have to read the specs, I have to read articles here and there, and then I come up with this list. So these are the 10 event handlers who are missing at that time. But the next thing that you guys will be thinking, why Barakoda is using hard-coded list of event handlers? Come on, this is 2015. And you are using a hard-coded list of event handlers on mouse over, on mouse move. How you will keep track of all these new event handlers? It's impossible. Barakoda replied, because of logging and tracking purpose, we are using these hard-coded event handlers. I suggested them, no, please use a generic event handler uh, where you are only looking at on let's say because all event handlers starts with the word on and the good thing is that they listen and they have added a new regular expression it's called on event references miscellaneous generic now this regular expression if is in place it looks at on and then static so but next question what about bypasses if event handler is a part of regular expression let's say on error if they have an on error in the list, can we still bypass it? Yes. Backtick was enough. So the regular expressions at that time they have is only looking at uh, single code or double code before the event handler name. But up to IE9, I think, if you will use like that, image source and X is in backtick. So for IE, it's OK. And, but for the regular expression is what not, not, not okay. So it bypasses the regular expression. Next, observe the thing that I observed at that time is the dot. Dot was culprit. Uh, among the list of event handlers, they, their regular expression thinks that if there is an event handler name, then there will be definitely is equal to, and then they have a dot in the regular expression. In regular expression, dot means every character except new line. This is where the bypass comes. For the browser, it's OK. For example, if I will use on mouse over is equal to, then instead of having a function call, if I will use percentage zero a, browser will move the control to the next line. And it will still remain a valid vector. And this bypasses basically Barracuda. Let's move on to tag-based weaknesses of Barracuda. They have a regular expression, they call it unsafe tag. And uh, how they're using it, they have a list of dangerous tags like iframe, form, object. So whenever they found it in the input, it, it invokes and it stops it. During, in this regular expression, if I visualize it, this is not the exact real form, this is just a summary to give you an idea. So they have other tags like that, only the tag name, the less than and then tag name. But inside this regular expression, they are treating meta in a different way. I don't know the reason why. 
they are treating meta, then there will be a space, and then there will be this keyword attribute value HTTP equal, and then or content. So this is where the bypass comes. So you are, they are doing a special treatment to meta metadata, and this special treatment of meta leads to bypass. Like that, if I will use slash, or is before HTTP, I will use ID, or I can use any space alternate characters, so they all will bypass their regular expression. So in a similar way, they have a regular expression that deals with opening and closing tags. And Barracuda calls them opening HTML tag and closing HTML tag. The purpose is to stop arbitrary tag injection. So the, the RE they have, it's, uh, it works like that. It's just a generic view form. There will be a tag opening, or, and then the tag name will have at most 10 characters. So their assumption, the RE is assuming that the tag name will be 10 character. Okay? What about math tag M multiscript? It has 13 characters. So it bypasses the regular expression. Now they change it, and then now they are looking at 32 characters. So if you will find some tag that has a length of greater than 32 character, you can bypass it. So next thing. Their RE assume that the injected tag name will be alphabetic, like that. There will be a less than sign, and then the tag name will be any alphabetic, like A, A to Z. But what about old IEXSS payloads? That it starts with like percentage, multi-line comment, or single line comment. They all bypasses their regular expression. Now they have added support for it also. Also, this RE closing HTML tag it assumes that the R, uh, the, the attacker will properly close the angular bracket, this greater than sign. But what about half closed tag? Like that, there is no greater than sign, closing sign, and it's for the browser, it's perfectly okay. So these payloads will bypass the regular expressions. Now everything is fixed. So what I am telling you, it has been fixed now. So they have a data URI based shortcomings. Data URI, another way to execute JavaScript. In Firefox, it's good. Dedicated regular expression, they call it an evan via data URI scheme. And because of me, this RE has been updated three times. And this is a very good journey of this RE. Initial version, I reported a bypass. They add more complexity. Then I reported another bypass, then they added more complexity. <laughs> and at the end, now they settle down at a very simple version. So it means that adding complexity simply does not work. A simple version may work. So these are the different vectors that was able to bypass their RE at that time. Now the RE is doing good, basically. So right now I am using the online version. Slides are already online. So they are available. I will tell you the link. Next, uh, when I was bussing, uh, bypassing this uh, data URI, in the, in the first vector, if you will see, I am using this HTML5 character references like and colon. Barracuda realizes, OK, I am going to use another HTML references. And then they have added this new RE. As I told you, previous total was 11, then now 13. So they have added a new RE called even via HTML name char references. Here, you can see everything tab, new line, colon, they have added a new regular expression. So it's now doing good, but in combination with other regular expression. Actually, what I see in the wild, because we are using, we are also using Barracuda. Our main web properties are behind Barracuda. In real life, you are not using all these regular expressions. Normally, you have to create an exception in the WAF because of the false positive. Sometimes developers are lazy in fixing it. You said, OK, we have at least one protection layer. But then customer complains, things are not working for me. Then we create an exception. Exception means that the part, sometime particular RE is a part of WAF, but you are not using it. So that's why I'm saying that this regular expression is doing good, but in combination with all other IE, REs. Style-based bypasses of Varakuda. So they have two dedicated regular expressions. They call it XSS style attribute and URL references that tries to stop CSS-based JavaScript execution. 
this regular expression, they call it XSS style attribute, has been updated twice. At the end of day, I will show you now, it's getting better in security, but right now it's causing very false positive. It's, it's buggy right now. Uh, sorry for the diagram, but just to give an idea, uh, previously they were looking at the word expression. It's strange. They, were, uh, they found if hard-coded expression was a part of a style attribute, then okay, well, we'll stop it. Now they are not looking at the expression anymore. These are some of the bypasses. For example, they were looking at expression. I use the escaping backslash. This sounds perfectly OK to IE. It works. Here I use, they were expecting this parenthesis after the word expression. I used escaping form of parenthesis. In the next case, they were expecting there will be a colon. Here I use the decimal encoded form. So these are the, all the variations that were able to bypass their regular expressions. So the current state, right now, as I'm talking, this is the current state of this regular expression. Uh, the vector given here, div, style, color, red, div. Uh, their RE will capture it as a malicious thing. So they, they fix it twice to stop JavaScript, but now it's causing a lot of false positive. This harmless payload is captured as a malicious right now. In a similar way, they have another regular expression that uh, tries to stop JavaScript execution if someone will use background URL or background dash image, and inside the URL, he will use some evil URL. So they have a hard-coded word URL. Here it is. Instead of having a URL, what I used, if you will see here, background dash colon u, instead of r and l, I am using the backslash 72 for r and backslash 6 C for L. So it simply bypasses their regular expression. And the recent firmware patch that has been announced just a week ago, uh, I haven't tested it yet, but I heard from them that it fixes this issue. So bypassing WAF is cool. But what about if you will bypass WAF on, on the respective vendor's website? Barracuda is a vendor. They are providing a WAF. Isn't it would be awesome if I will bypass the WAF on their own website? In fact, this is not easy. Because first, I have to found an injection point. Then I have to bypass the regular expression. So this was cool, basically. Here is the bypass. On the main login form of Paracuda, double quotes style is equal to width call an expression because they were looking parenthesis after the word expression. I use the escape form of small parenthesis and this bypasses Barracuda on their main website. The website is login.barracuda. So they fix it because of two reasons. Now developer is now basically encoding style. This was a injection in the, in the hidden attribute. So now developer is uh, encoding this double code also, and at the same time, they have updated their regular expression. Now it is captured, but it works at that time. But I'm not stopping here. First, bypassing their regular expression, then bypassing their WAF, their def uh, tag definition on their website. But they have an admin interface also. We are using the admin interface. OK, how is it possible that there is an admin interface and there is no XSS? So in the admin interface, at one point, they asked us to change the background URL, this blue color. They allow us, OK, let's give us another URL if you want to see the admin interface having a very funny background picture somewhere. So you can, you can change it via this option. OK, let's do it. But at that time, the problem was that they were not allowing JavaScript or data URI. They were forcing me to use an HTTP or HTTPS URL. Okay. Let's use this HTTP URL. But after the question mark, I use double quotes. So for, for them, it's OK. We have an HTTP-based image. But this double quotes will break their context. And then own mouse over will simply work. And this is a stored XSS on every page of Paracuda admin interface. Every page has simply browsing it. And this XSS pop-up occurs because of this background image. So this was the payload in action. Here you see for them, they treat it href here. And then because they were using double quotes, this double quote break the context, and then on mouse over simply works. So takeaway for the regarding Barracuda is that please, if someone or if someone you know is using Barracuda, 
please make sure that right now you should use this version 1.102 and I am telling you this is not easy for the not easy to update and the firmware patch is also very difficult to update because attack definition does not require a reboot firmware patch requires a reboot and if in a big organization something that requires a reboot forget about it it's not possible so but if you think you are good you have your own library of cross-site scripting Barracuda gives you a facility to use your own regular expression you can customize it this is something good they are offering it next Barracuda is a big fish there is a, another WAF it's called Sakuri they call it a cloud proxy for details uh, given the time I will refer to my talk some months ago at a web spin you the slides are there but I will try to summarize it Sakuri is a cloud-based WAF and this model is right now very good for a small businesses they think that something is better than nothing okay let's go for cloud-based WAF at least it will provide some protection and if you look at the rate it's just nine dollar per month you have a WAF protection and it costs only nine dollar it's cheaper than pizza <laughs> pizza cost ten dollar fifteen dollar <laughs> so the WAF cost nine dollar <laughs> it's, it's cheaper so it's better to go for it and the good thing about Sakuri this is a very popular diagram you s maybe you saw it here and there I participated in a WAF context the one vendor learned everything and he will earn million and all I got a fucking t-shirt but no this sounds uh, this is not true in case of Sakuri because for every bypass they rewarded me for me it was an exercise it was a paid exercise so uh, I am playing cat and mouse with them I bypass they reward me they fixed then I again bypass it <laughs> so this is the f number first bypass is simply actually there is no, no rocket science in it just the only thing is to apply the knowledge in a systematic way you have to find a pattern which tag is allowed and and in which pattern that tag or that particular event handler will work in this case h2 a simple heading tag id is i am heading an on, on mouse over if you will use on mouse over some on some other tags it was not working at that time but in this case it works so here you see they were uh, I realized that they were using uh, they were basically looking at a word prompt that normally we use for proof of concept so here I use the unicode encoding form of P so it simply bypasses it their protection so here are the number three to number nine bypasses like in this case I use the encoding form here I use back tick here here I use escaping here in order to fool their protection as a part of attribute I use greater than so that their protection will think okay here the tag is closing but for the browser it's nothing so here I use instead of function I use again I, this dot on mouse over then alert instead of parenthesis I use back tick so there are a lot of variations then when they stop when they st start stopping alert confirm then I used input box from VB script and then AWL so a lot of fun was there and in a similar way on mouse enter on wheel on mouse move but as I told you for me it was a paid exercise I was continuously bypassing them I was reporting them they were fixing it and uh, I'm grateful that this guy denial said he's the founder of Sequoia he replied to me I said now your all mouse variations were patched we are safe now I said okay <laughs> we have a content editable attribute which means that now all keyword event will start working so here you see on key down on key press on key up for me it's a money so they were giving me money so and then he said Asher on mouse and on key are blocked your fun is finished okay let's see something new we have a draggable so now on drag start on drag leave on drag enter will move so it's a cat and mouse game so in a similar way it's bored I made a list this is this is interesting for the WAF 
WAF means Web Application Firewall. At least it should stop script tag. You are a firewall, you should stop a script tag. I tested the script variation and my goal at that time was to run the script tag. I already executed JavaScript in so many ways, but let's go for a script tag. I tried three variations, a script access denied, a script space source access denied, a script slash access denied. They were doing good. These variations were blocked. But there must be a way. I like prison break. So <laughs> that's why. Percentage 2F is the answer. They were blocking slash, but the URL encoding form of slash is percentage 2F. It was working. And here the vector, see the vector. A script, percentage 2F, source, and a proof of concept alert executing on any uh, on free domain. It was working in their own website. So some bypasses based on encoding. Uh, here what I'm doing, uh, if I remember correctly, yeah. They were blocking JavaScript keyword, JavaScript. So uh, what I did, I used the decimal encoding form of T, the letter T. So here it becomes and number sign 116. And because it's a get parameter, so and becomes percentage 26 and number sign becomes percentage 23. For the browser, it's OK and it bypasses it. In a similar way, uh, colon, uh, hex encoding form of colon also works. But this is interesting. Because it's a cat and mouse game. I was playing with them. I realized that uh, now Sakuri is not allowing me seven characters after any, any event handler name. Like on mouse over, on error. After that, now they have some check in their implementation. If they found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they captured me. OK. Count characters. Think why they are doing it. Alert one has eight characters. Confirm one has 10 characters. Prompt one has nine characters. Maybe this could be the, could be the reason. The developers are thinking that at least for a proof of concept, Asha needs at least eight characters. OK, let's have a check out seven characters and save some money. OK. These are old trick, i.e. Uh, on Slackers community, it was mentioned, people are using it. Like URL is equal to name. Where URL will be, where name will be JavaScript alert one, and this simply works in all i browser, like iframe name uh, JavaScript on load URL is equal to name. But count characters, URL name has also eight characters. URL three is equal to four, and then name eight. The limit is on seven. This is the bypass. <laughs> what I am doing here, on load is equal to URL is equal to i. What does it i? Actually, I was testing in old IE browser, and soon I realized that you don't need name. It can be any alphabet. It can be A, it can be B, it can be C, it can be anything. Now count characters. URL 3 equal 4 I 5. They have a check on 7. So we have a JavaScript execution on 5. But next hurdle. They were blocking iframe tag. I did all the testing with iframe. With iframe, it was good. Fair enough. We have now five character JavaScript execution. But iframe tag is blocked. But here we go with the style. The same thing can be achieved with the style tag. And more money for me at this point. <laughs> so after all these bypasses, after playing all this cat and mouse game, after fixing everything, this payload still works. A very simple payload. This was the first payload that I show you in case of Barracuda, where you use the back tick for holding the value of any attribute. Right now, it's, it's working, basically. So I found this quote, and I really like this second line. Always willing to take care of, take advantage of an opportunity, because in both cases, I join industry. Industry give me an opportunity to, to use Barracuda. Let's play with it. Sukuri so offered me money. If you will bypass it, we will give you money. Let's avail the opportunity. Don't miss the opportunity. So the conclusion would be, you can use WAF, 
but always keep in mind it should not be the only protection layer please fix all your bugs in the application because i am working with the developers nowadays uh, this is the mindset of the developer i'm telling you honestly a developer told me asher okay we take some time to fix the bug we have a waf waf will save us i said no please fix it in the application so and a special thanks goes to honda auto our security team especially this vishal uh, because on a very first day he introduced me barakoda and uh, again thanks to barakoda waf and security team they have two separate team waf team is separate and security team is separate and uh, thanks to the founder of cto and from my side thanks <laughs> so any question if you have So slides are all already online. I will tweet about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's more like a comment than a question. The, I think the last thing you said. Uh, I also see this. And for example, Sukuri. I think they are doing good work in like finding web vulnerabilities. But they always write in their blog posts something like, "Okay, if you have our web application firewall, you don't need to worry." And everything's fine mm -hmm. and i think uh, that's really a dangerous thing that these web application firewalls give people the feeling like this is solving your problem and you don't have to patch it Exa exactly i uh, i double your point because if you are a developer actually uh, now a days i'm working with the developers closely we 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 have daily meetings on daily basis so developers are very good they can develop very amazing websites because they have business pressures they can do their web job but the problem is that they are not security aware that's why the implicit assumption they have we are protected by waf okay let's do other task we are safe waf will protect us so that's why i did this research i want to show them no fix all the bugs in the application waf is good you may use it as an extra layer in fact if you are a big organization then because of the legal and compliance issue it's compulsory to use waf because especially if we want to go for an iso certification or something like that there are not many compliance issues so waf is there people will use waf use it use of your choice at least it would be something is better than nothing but please force your developers to fix bugs in the application so don't only rely on waf so in fact there was a story recently story uh, i haven't mentioned in this uh, slides Actually, one day I was, I came across uh, another WAF called WebNight. I was looking at the change log of WebNight firewall, and in some change log, I found that they are do doing the same thing. Like they are adding hard-coded event handlers. I am telling you the truth. I have never seen WebNight in my real life. I never tested it. just by looking at the change log i actually i have these payloads these uh, new uh, event handlers that i use for barakoda i randomly throw out an email hey following event handler will bypass you after 10 minutes i got a reply from webnight thanks for reporting these event handlers they they were missing <laughs> we are going to add it and two days ago they have released a new version 4.4 webnight and they have added my payloads uh, my new uh, event handlers that i reported to them without even testing it just by looking at the change log so actually the problem is that all wafs are using almost the same approach so like hard coded tags hard coded event handlers i don't know but they are following this approach and people are using it 150000 organization is not a joke so people are using it their waf So, any other thing you like to ask? Feel free to contact me on Twitter, and uh, I have I will be here tomorrow also.